Hmm. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 25th day of August. How are you? How are you this morning? What's going on with everybody? With everybody. Uh, it is, I said the 25th day. Let's see here. Let's do some counting. August, September, October, November, December. Four months till Christmas. Four months till Christmas. Do I need to go ahead and get you my Christmas list? Four months. That will give you plenty of time to do shopping for your preacher. Four months to Christmas. Can you believe that, though? We are actually four months until Christmas Day. I just simply, simply cannot believe it. I want to say good morning to everybody as you're getting in. Hey, go ahead right now. Hit that share button. Boom. Hit it. Ready? Go. Boom. Got it. All right. Hit that share button. We want to get that out here, and that's exactly what I am enduring right now. I am I am hitting the share button if my computer will go ahead and do it. There we go. There we go. Boom. Shaka. Laka. Got to hit that share button. Got to hit that share button. Today is going to be one of those days that I literally stick my head underneath my Keurig and get it to just turn on. I am in drastic need of large quantities of coffee. So uh, if you see me walking around and I'm, I'm kind of kind of got that, that twitch, then you know I need coffee. Hand me a cup of coffee quickly. Hand me a cup of coffee quickly. It is so good to see you. Uh, hey, it is a beautiful day outside, but I am, I'm hearing, I'm reading that we may not have so much good weather tomorrow. It looks like we're going to see parts of uh, what is now a hurricane. Hurricane Laura uh, is in the Gulf of Mexico, headed right toward the coast, and it is coming our way. Uh, I am almost in, almost in... And then I can see everybody, I can read, I can talk to everybody. But, uh, okay, for real, uh, we're supposed to get a lot of rain, okay? At least that's what they're predicting right now. Now, who knows? We, I mean, we just, we don't know. Um, so, um, uh, we'll just we'll just see. But if you happen to have to get out in the next couple of days in, in these this uh, torrential downpours, guys, please be careful. Please be careful. Let's see here. Good morning. Good morning. I have got Lisa Lee. Good morning. Good morning. There's Mary Weddington. There's Miss Denny. Hey, there's my bride. She is on. And speaking of my bride, speaking of my bride, uh, and thank you for asking, Miss Denny. Uh, if you did not know, Miss Denise took a tumble yesterday uh, at the ABC school. We were delivering uh, school supplies, and uh, it just uh, it, it was just one of those things. Tripped on one of those outdoor rugs, and uh, bless her heart, she and the concrete had a uh, an intimate conversation. Um, uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, you know, scared the snot out of me. But uh, uh, we spent yesterday at the uh, uh, emergency room trying to make sure that everything was okay. Uh, and Denise, you're on, so you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. But uh, you know, she's pretty pretty beat up. Okay, uh, you know, pretty good size knot on the forehead. Uh, she's got a got a gash on her nose. Uh, her nose is swollen and uh, busted. Her lip uh, it's swollen and busted on the inside. Um, and kind of kind of banged up the right wrist, which is the the, the side she fell on. So uh, not as much bruising though as I thought was going to be. Uh, and which is a uh, praise the Lord. She slept really really good last night, so that was a blessing. An angel braced her fall, Mary. There is no doubt about that statement. I mean, there is sincerely no no doubt about that statement because it could have been a whole lot worse. Doctor told us yesterday that uh, uh, there is nothing broken. And I say praise the Lord for that. Uh, I just, uh, uh, like I said, that was scared me to death. Nothing was broken, uh, and and no concussion. She has shown no concussion-like symptoms. The doctor didn't didn't think anything. So, uh, uh, like I said, you know, some light bruising, and it could get a little worse, you know, as the days go by. But uh, uh, other than that, just horribly sore. And so uh, keep praying for my bride, and she's going to stay home for the next couple of days. Hey, there's my buddy Jared Sparks. One well, of my former students. Good morning, buddy. Glad you're hanging out with us today. Glad you're in. Hope you have a great day today. But, and thank you, by the way, for what you do. Thank you for being on the front lines. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Jared is a nurse, and that is even not the, the correct title. Jared, you might want to share with us what your title is. But uh, Jared takes care of an awful lot of folks in his uh, uh, profession. So uh, uh, thank you, Jared, for what you do. There's Mary Ellen Gray. Good morning, Miss Mary Ellen. 
I hope you're having a great Tuesday. A great Tuesday. Hope uh, everybody is doing it. Let's see here. There is a uh, there is a Mrs. Ruth Hastings. I'll say good morning to Miss Ruth. Uh, I don't know you, Miss Ruth, but welcome into my office this morning. Grab a cup of coffee. Pull you up a chair. Pull you up a chair. There's Miss Annie Norman. Good morning, Miss Annie Norman. Uh, thank you guys for uh, being very considerate about my bride and asking about her. Uh, and thank you for all the prayers. Please, please, please do not stop. Let's get them going because, uh, you know, anytime you take an injury to the head, uh, there's always possible consequences. So uh, we want to make sure that God is all over that, all over that. So that is uh, exactly what's going on yesterday. Guys, we had a tremendous day passing out school supplies. We went to the ABC school. We went to Stewart Elementary and y'all, uh, we were flogged at Stewart Elementary. It was amazing. Just amazing. Jared, home health, not really on the front lines per se, but I've had a couple. Uh, yeah, buddy, what you do is incredible. And all I can say is just thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The folks at Stewart were just absolutely so precious. Um, we, we had prayer at ABC school. Uh, we had to step outside the doors at ABC. See you later, buddy. Be good. Thank you. Uh, we had prayer outside of ABC school when we were at Stewart. Y'all get this right in the Dean's office. We had prayer. I mean, we had prayer <laughs> in her office. The principal was there. The assistant principal was there. The office staff was in there. It was, y'all went to church yesterday morning right in that uh, in, in that little room, and they were just so appreciative. And then uh, we had uh, uh, school supplies delivered over to Central and school supplies delivered over to Palace. Now, Kate, good morning, Kate. But, uh, Kate, I was just checking out your message from Sunday. That's a great message, by the way, buddy. On forgiveness. Thank you for that. Very, very powerful. I appreciate that. And then uh, we dropped off buckets, I mean bucketfuls of chocolate to uh, the ABC school and to Central and Stewart Elementary. It was just mounds of chocolate. Anything you can imagine, there was Hershey bars, there was cookies and cream bar, Reese's, uh, Twix, Kit Kat, I, I mean you name it and we put it on there and we had labels on every candy bar that said we love our teachers, Ridgewood Baptist Church, lovemyrbc.com. So just a sweet, sweet treat that we took out just to say thank you to our teachers as they began a very, very stressful day yesterday. We just wanted to reach out. We wanted to love on those. And uh, uh, we did that. And we'll do that again. That will not be the last time that we reach out to these teachers. And But the school supplies, y'all, it was just, it was incredible to see the, 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 the thank yous that was just coming off of the face. You could just tell by their expression how much that they appreciated what uh, you did, what you did, how you gave, and how you poured your heart into that ministry. Folks, it's about being the church, and that's exactly what it was. You sacrificially gave, and uh, you, you got school supplies, you brought them, you gave donations. So all of it, all of that was just all to give that. What we would like to do, and what, I just want to throw this out at you. we got a great crowd on this morning. And uh, we were talking yesterday morning about this. And by the way, we had a great crowd. It was Denise and I and Miss Mary Weddington, Miss Frida, uh, Miss Denny. I mean, everybody chipping in, putting things in boxes, getting it organized and delivering it yesterday. Uh, what we would like to do is to begin now, right, right now, and that is to start gathering school supplies throughout the year so that we will have a, a just a continual stash of school supplies that we can keep going back into the school systems. Um, really, our focus is going to be on the three elementaries. There'll be ABC and then uh, Stewart and, Elf and uh, Central. That'll be pretty much our primaries. But if we could just grab a couple of boxes of pencils or pencil boxes, ink pens, scissors, glue sticks, something, and we're going to create a space here uh, on the church campus that we can begin to store those items. And then that way, this time next year, can you imagine what we're gonna be able to do and to get into our school systems for that? So uh, if you'll just pray about being a part of that, 
Okay, please pray about being a part of that. We want to go ahead and do that and uh, and just uh, uh, be a, a blessing. We, we want to be able to reach back and to help our community in, uh, in that manner. We want to continue to pray for our teachers, pray for our students. And uh, guys, we want to pray for the parents and the, te the students that are doing virtual schools. Uh, because that is just as stressful if you've never done it and you have no concept as to what's going to go on. And so uh, we want to make sure that we are praying for those folks as well. Uh, hey, again, we are going to be looking at some pretty strange weather coming in with the, the remnants of that hurricane. So please be careful tomorrow. Uh, if you need to mow your yard, today might be that day to get it done because it looks like we're going to get rain in the next three or four days. We're going to wrap up the book of Philippians today. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn on over. We're in chapter four. And we're going to pick up in verse 10. Verse 10, and we are going to finish out the chapter that is going to finish out the book. And I am very excited to be in this passage. I was really, really hoping that this would be during the week and that it wouldn't uh, land on the weekend. So that way we can actually kind of talk about it. Tomorrow, we begin a brand new book. Are you ready? Drum roll. We are going to just go right on the very next page and we're going to go and cover the book of Colossians. We're going to stay in this theme of those prison epistles that Paul wrote to the churches. And so I want to make sure that uh, that we really understand the heart of Paul and what's going on in those churches. Miss Andy, we love our teachers. They prepare next generation. Our doctors, lawyers, teachers, it takes a village. Oh, oh, honey, it's we just love people. And uh, we love our community. We love our teachers. We love those that are, are uh, that you know, they put their life on the line. And... Uh, I mean, I mean, for real, you, I mean, you just think about it. They gave their life to teach the next generations and uh, we want to say thank you. That's, that's exactly what we want to do. And so anything that we can do, anything that we can be a part of, we want to give back and to just let our teachers know, let our, our administration, our staff know that, hey, we got your back. We, we do. We, we've got it covered. So uh, anything that you can do, folks, that you would like to help and be a part of that uh, fabulous ministry that we're going to uh, kick off right now. I mean, we're just, you can bring it in today. You can bring school supplies into the office today. And we're going to begin getting it organized, getting it arranged, and getting it set as we consistently bless our school systems. Uh, again, it starts tomorrow. Colossians, you want to go ahead and get read up? You can go ahead and do that. Uh, today, we're going to wrap up Philippians. Tomorrow night, just kind of real quick announcement-wise. Tomorrow night, we are going into the sixth chapter of Ephesians here at uh, uh, Wednesday night live. We will be on campus or online, and we are deep diving into six. It's going to take a few days. Uh, a few weeks to really get through uh, chapter six because we want to really, really tear apart the uh, the whole armor of God and look at each one very specifically. I know we've probably studied this thing a hundred times, but it always helps to go back and refresh to understand exactly what each piece is for and how it firmly fits together, what our purpose is, who we're battling. We've got to know who our enemies are, amen? And uh, this is our way of doing that. So that is tomorrow night, Thursday morning, uh, shortly after my live, then uh, Miss Pat will be here. And I am very excited to get Miss Pat back in the building, the power of purpose. So that is going to take place on Thursday tonight, 7 o'clock. Brother Larry is going to be teaching Sunday school. We'll be in the Zoom room if you want to join us. If not, you can catch us right here on Facebook Live. And that's going to start at 7 o'clock, Brother Larry teaching. That's going to kind of wrap up the week. Everything's going to go on Sunday morning. Guys, we're going to go back for round two of Jonah. Um, we're going to look at one very specific verse, and that is verse 17 in the first chapter of Jonah. And I promise you, it is not what you think. We're going to really, really peel those layers back. And so if you want to go ahead and look at it, read it, pray over it, study it, ask God to speak to you through it, that would be amazing. And come prepared to receive a blessing. Come anticipating God to work. Come expecting God to do a mighty work here uh, on the Ridgewood campus on Sunday morning. So that's our week here at Ridgewood. Again, it is four months till Christmas. Four months. It is August the 25th of 2020. I cannot believe this year is rolling like it is. All right, here we go. We're going to peel back the layers. Verse 10, starting at Philippians chapter 4. What we're going to find here in this passage of Scripture is a lot of verses that we're going to know. We're going to recognize some of them are even going to be our favorites. I can tell you right now, one of these verses is Miss Denise's favorite verses of all time. Uh, and you're going to see several in here that, that is going to really ring a bell like, oh, I know that. I remember that. Uh, but the, the thing I want us to do is 
I want to put every one of them in context. Okay, we have to understand the context because when we understand the context, then the power of that verse comes stronger. It comes more powerful off the page. And, and before I ever read a verse here, let's understand Paul is in prison. Okay, he's in prison. And he is writing this letter to the church at Philippi. And in all honesty, this has been an amazing book. I mean, he's really, really lifting them up and encouraging them, okay? And this is going to continue. This has been the major theme throughout this whole thing. Remember what we talked about. The whole theme of the book is rejoice. It's finding joy. And so we're going to see it in its uh, you know, exclusivity right here in the very last part of this book. So here we go. Chapter four, beginning at verse 10, Paul says this, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. In other words, he knew that they were wanting to get to him, to bring him, to minister to him in prison, but they just didn't have that opportunity, but he knew their intent. He, he understood that. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. What a powerful statement this morning. Can you and I say that? Can you and I say that we have learned that in whatever state we're in to be content? Wow. And Paul's sitting here in a Roman prison, probably down in the dungeons in a, in a wet, damp, dirt floor, shackled, probably beaten. And yet he says, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. And yet I find us, here we are, that we've got everything known to man. And yet many of us are still not satisfied. Pretty ironic, isn't it? Let's keep going. Paul says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. What does that mean? He says, I know how to live humbly. And I know how to live in prosperity. That's, that's what he's saying. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then we tie in verse 13. And so I want to read 12 and lean into it. And then let's put this bad boy in context. Actually, I'm going to back up and start at verse 11. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to live humbly, how to be abased. I know how to abound or to live in prosperity. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See how bigger that verse just got? Do you see how powerful that verse just became? Because Paul says that I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. I've learned how to live humbly. I have learned to live in prosperity. It doesn't matter because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What a passage of scripture. I think when we look at verse 13, I think what we have to do is we have to attach verses 11 and 12 to it because then it's like, oh, oh. And yet Paul is sitting here writing this letter, most probably dictating it in shackles. And he says, I've learned how to live humbly. I've learned how to be full. I've learned how to be hungry. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, to Paul, it didn't matter. And that's where we've got to get to. That's this, this is the life that we have to look at because it didn't matter to Paul whether it was in shackles or whether he was you know, in some celebration of life. He understands that he can do all things. Through who? Through Christ, who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. They cared about him. They worried about him. They, they, they reached out to him. Today, that's the equivalent of us sending a text, making a phone call, going to visit, sending a card, uh, uh, putting a, a note on Facebook. I know. I get it. I get it. You shared in my distress. I reached out to you. And that's what they did. They reached back out to Paul. 
Now you Philippians also know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Well, he just put this church above the others, didn't he? For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full. Having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There's another one of those verses that we see a lot, we hear a lot. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full. Having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, now we know where that verse is coming from. It's going right back to that Philippian church. Wow. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Verse 21. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Great, great letter to the church at Philippi. I pray you get a chance to go back and read those few verses often. Uh, I would encourage you to go back and read them again this week, just to put it all in perspective. Read it all at one time. Small book. You can do that. Tomorrow morning, hey, we're headed to Colossians, continuing those prison epistles written by Paul. Hey, it has been a great day. We've got a lot of folks still coming on. I appreciate each and every one of you. Appreciate my buddy Kane Wheeler hanging out with me this morning. Appreciate one of my former students, Jared Sparks, coming in. And uh, we've even got uh, some folks that uh, you know you never would expect that'll just try to sneak in and try to try to hear what's going on. And I so appreciate that. Such a good day, folks. I am out of here. I'm going to get ready to get, get a things, uh, several things done today, and uh, got to work on some music for a little while, and uh, got to get ready. It is Zoom time tonight, with Brother Larry, at seven o'clock. I hope you can join us. I hope you're in the Zoom room, and if not, please, please, please join us right here on Facebook Live. I love you guys so much. If y'all need anything, holler at me. I'll be here at the church office most of the day. And uh, remember, tell somebody about Jesus, all right? Hey, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.